Tracking the Tropics, powered by Bose Electric. The busy October in the tropics continues, but thankfully with two systems heading out to sea. Oscar has turned north and Nadine has a new name. That's right. That's all ahead on this edition of Tracking the Tropics with meteorologist Rebecca Barry. I'm JB Buno. Welcome in uh, to our, I believe, second to last October edition of Tracking the Tropics. Tracking uh, Oscar and the remnants of Nadine that actually now has a new name to take us all through the very latest is meteorologist Rebecca Barry. Before we send it over to her, a reminder, we're here to answer your questions. If you have a question in the comments section, you can use hashtag HeyRebecca or hashtag HeyJB. I'll be looking for those comments starting now ahead of our meteorologist Q&A coming up in just a bit. Rebecca? Hey, guys. A little over a week ago, social media was on fire about what the potential for Nadine would be. A ton of information, misinformation got shared around. A fake hurricane track got shared showing Nadine moving into the Gulf in nearly the exact same location. And we knew that that wasn't likely to happen because of cold fronts. But a lot of times that misinformation gets such a louder reach and, and goes further than the actual true information goes and so now we're we're looking back with retrospect and sh showing that yeah the cold fronts absolutely block nadine which has now become christy from turning into the gulf and also oscar which wasn't even that high of a possibility for formation but it did end up forming and so here's what's going on with nadine that's that circle down in the bottom left of your screen and then oscar is there just to kind of to the northeast of cuba and they're on the right side of your screen and so nadine did move across mexico and is now in the pacific and has reformed and when that happens when the uh the national hurricane center makes a basically a decision on whether or not the the low stayed in track intact over the land and if it did then it keeps the name if it didn't and it doesn't it did remain a low over land then it gets the name from the new basin that it's in so that's why it's now tropical storm christy because they determined that it did not maintain that center of circulation as it moved over land however what's left of it did move back over water and reform into tropical storm christy with maximum winds around 60 miles per hour it's moving to the west at 16 miles per hour out over some pretty warm water of the Pacific, and that's going to allow for some intensification back into a major hurricane. But this will count for the Pacific side of things. This will not count for our Atlantic storm count season. Won't count as a major hurricane for us. Won't count as a tropical storm or a hurricane for us. We will count Nadine, but not Christy. And it's sort of separated by basin there. So this is just a big, unfortunately, disruptor for surf and, and ships out there, but not really going to have much of an impact on any, any land, which is good news. Now getting to Oscar, Oscar had a weird path. You can barely see it in that light gray there. If you follow, if you look at where all the clouds are exploding on the bottom right of your screen, you can see the beginning of that gray path. Then you can follow it where it approaches Cuba and then makes a sharp turn to the northeast. That's the cold front. That's what happens when tropical systems run into cold fronts like we typically see this time of the year. That's why we all oftentimes say for the Gulf, the second cold front of October shuts things down because systems just can't enter the Gulf against that type of shear. It would be very unusual if they were able to. And now Oscar, which was earlier a hurricane, is now on its way to a low pressure system as it moves further and further away from the U.S. So this is on its way to becoming a fish storm. It certainly wasn't a fish storm over Cuba, especially with the power outages that Cuba was experiencing. It was a particularly dangerous situation there with landslides and lots of rainfall and wind. But now it's becoming less and less of a threat to anyone, which is good news. And all the spaghetti models agree. You know, we were JB and I were actually talking about this. Does this have a chance to like curve back into New England? This time of the year, it's really hard because we have such a strong flow from west to east across the entire U.S. with, of course, the jet stream starting to dip, the cold front starting to move across. It's just very, very unlikely. And so here's where we're at in the season. It is nice to be on the backside of that peak. And so typically moving forward from here on out, we see less than... 10 to 15 percent of tropical activity period moving forward we just don't see a lot of formation and if we do see formation it is typically way out in the open atlantic and really not much of an effect for anyone certainly not for the gulf and so the long-term tropical outlook does have a, about a 20 percent or less chance for formation to the south of cuba and that is still where some really warm waters are and so if that were to occur we would see potentially like a nadine type situation where it moves across nicaragua across mexico possibly costa rica down there and so that's the area that we do have chances to develop but because of the frontal pattern this time of the year it's very unlikely that any of that would make it into the gulf you can see how strong the wind shear is across the gulf that's what would keep anything that forms to the south of cuba to the south of Cuba and not allow not allow it to cross into the Atlantic. 
checking in on sea surface temperatures. We talked about how much uh, warmer the sea surface temperatures were this year than normal. I just wanted to point out how much Milton cooled down the sea surface temperatures off of our coastline. And so when big storms move over hot water, they take the energy and they pull up cooler water from the deeper uh, parts of the Gulf and Ocean. And that's what we saw. And so there's still a very noticeable cooling wake in Milton's path. And so that's also going to keep things even quieter across the Gulf. As far as the jet stream goes, we are loving watching the jet stream continue to basically push fronts through, keep things quiet for us, keep things out of the Gulf, and keep things to the south. And so that's exactly what happened with Oscar there moving to the northeast there and then Nadine moving to the south across there. So that's what's boiling in the tropics right now. Here's how things are shaping up name-wise. Uh, we've made it through Oscar. Uh, don't anticipate seeing a patty out there, but we could. And in terms of what that meant for the season forecast, it, it still pulls us a little below most of the seasonal forecast for this time of the year, despite how busy it's been. But as everyone who had to live through Debbie, Helene, and then Milton go, it only takes a couple of storms for it to seem like a bad season. You don't need 25 storms for it to be a bad season. It's more about how those storms impact your area. I'd like you to back it up here for a second. Can mm -hmm. you go back to the name list for a second? Because yeah. you mentioned you don't anticipate seeing a patty. Do you mean in October or period? I don't think so, period. I mean, it's just really hard. It's, it gets increasingly more more difficult to see these types of systems spin up. And if they do spin up, this is where they, they spin up. And so that little development area right. there to the south of Cuba where we do still have some relatively warm waters and you are to the south of this big bank of wind shear, and so that's where the environment is favorable down there near Jamaica, down to the south of Cuba. And so we could. It's not impossible, but it's certainly less and less likely as we move forward. Let's get to the comments that are coming in on social media. And of course, the, the big question uh, comes in from Anthony right off the top here. Uh, Anthony says, hashtag hey, Rebecca, are we in the clear for the rest of the hurricane season for the Tampa Bay area? Or do we need to be concerned uh, about anything? Anthony, this is the... Yeah, it's a big, big question. question. Yeah, and Anthony, I really believe that we are in the clear at this point. Something extremely unusual would have to occur for anything to, to happen. And with that wind shear blocking across the entire Gulf, it looks less and less likely. We've made it past the second cold front of October. That's when meteorologists start planning their vacations. So let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Is there a certain reason, I mean, perhaps this is something more for our November episodes, because uh, as a reminder, folks, we, regardless of whether or not we are tracking something, tracking the tropics we stream every Tuesday during hurricane season at 1230 Eastern, 1130 Central. Perhaps this is something we revisit we, we really more in November to look back at the totality that was the month of October. Mm -hmm. But uh, October seeing really the storms of the season. Yes. Do we know why really yet or can we can we put a finger on it? And so we've been looking at this season and it's been a really unusual season and we knew that we were moving into the season with unprecedented warm waters and we just assumed that would mean that it would supercharge the season throughout. And it really didn't because we had such warm waters and it was in so warm over the Atlantic, we had what essentially related to high pressure, there wasn't cooler air in the upper levels of the atmosphere. It was just as warm in the upper levels of the atmosphere as it was at the southern, at the at the lower levels of the atmosphere, which created an incredibly stable environment. And so that's what kept us so quiet for most of October and most of September. And so the theory now is if we do enter a season with such unprecedented warm waters again, it could backload the season. We seem to have our normal September activity in October this year. And so it, it will remains to be seen as to whether or not that will be a trend moving forward or if this was kind of a one-off weird season. But that's what scientists will be looking at moving forward. So uh, I have this question coming in, and it comes in from David, uh, asking about how many hurricanes Florida has had from October 31st through November, November hurricanes. So I just did a quick little Google search. Thank um, you. I think that's just the, the quickest way to pull up this information without going, you know, doing a deep dive into the weather records, so to speak. And so some names that will that will jump out. Um, of course, look, the 2020 hurricane season was brutal. Yeah, and we don't we do had that again. multiple name storms um, in the month of November, but Ada was the big one that yeah. year. Uh, 2020 went deep into the Greek alphabet. Iota was also in 2020. But if you go back, I mean, Ida was a November storm. That was back in 2009. That was a considerable storm. Yeah. Um, and made landfall um, all the way, let's see here, moved north into the Gulf. Yep, came 
uh, post-tropical before reaching the Alabama coast on November 10th. Um, and then there are some others here. Otto is a name that has popped up here as well. I'm just kind of looking. Ada, Iota, Ida, Paloma, Lenny, back, to back in 1999. But so not a lot. Not too many, if you really look back, yeah. sort of at the last couple of decades. Now, we, I guess it, it's natural for people to wonder if October was... This year's September mm -hmm. is November going to be this year's October, Ooh. but it, it it the the science just doesn't back up that line of thinking, right? Not what I can see right now. Um, I, I everyone in my field looks at the the GFS run that goes two weeks out, even though we know that a lot of it is la la land forecasting, as we like to call sure. it. But yeah. even then, we're not seeing crazy forecasts of you know hurricanes forming. Um, that that one region to the south of Cuba, you know, every once in a while, every, every third model run or something will spend something kind of weak up. But it's just not looking gangbusters, which is good. Well, that's good for us. And uh, this graph should be hopefully some comfort to folks out there because you're looking here at us approaching that November 1st uh, section of the graph and uh, the considerable uh, drop off there is exactly what Florida needs and really what the United States needs as we continue to rebuild post Milton, post Helene, post Debbie, and and that cleanup here, Rebecca, it continues and will continue for for weeks if not months on end. Absolutely, um, for some people, this is a life defining storm. Yeah. You know, there's going to be before Milton and after Milton. Um, I ran into some new friends that lived in Clearwater Beach that lost everything. They said, we got out. You told us to get out. We got out, but we still lost everything, you know? Yeah. And so there are people that are in that position that will be in that position for a very long time. We will continue to keep you posted on Tracking the Tropics. Again, we stream this show every uh, Tuesday, 1230 Eastern, 1130 Central, regardless of whether or not we are tracking a storm. When we do not have a storm to track, it's all about hurricane education, preparedness, uh, and making sure that you are ready uh, for uh, the storm that um, that you know that could define the season, as we have had with uh, with Milton and before that Helene. So we'll continue to keep you posted over the weeks ahead. But we are hopeful, I think, here uh, at WFLA that there is no considerable storm in our future. If there is, additional episodes are are of course warranted, and we will be here with you live in your hurricane headquarters. But right now, uh, good to know that Oscar is not heading our direction, and Christy is heading way out into the Pacific. So for uh, meteorologist Rebecca Barry, I'm JB Buna. Thank you so much for joining us on this Tuesday edition of Tracking the Tropics, folks. We will see you soon and stay safe out there. Be well. Find Tracking the Tropics on these platforms. And for storm updates, the latest models, and helpful resources, visit trackingthetropics.tv.